My name is ha uh, Haruji Mizuta, and nickname is Harry, and I was born in uh, Riverstock, BC. Uh, reason I was born in uh, Riverstock, uh, my dad was working for CPR, and uh, my mom second marriage, but. Um, uh, he was uh, working in a CPR, so mom came over to uh, Revelstock. Then I was born in 1933, and uh, uh, three years later, uh, I had uh, my sister was born, and two of us. In that uh, 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 Revelstock, of course, uh, it's all workers, uh, uh, CPR workers. Uh, we were living in uh, kind of a car. Uh, converted to a uh, living quarter uh, just because uh, time to time we have to move to the site for uh, uh, repairing or maintain the uh, railway. And um, I stayed there till 1938 when I was five. Then, uh, those days, uh, when you get to the uh, age of, uh, uh, say, five or six, then uh, uh, Japanese parents, they tend to send the kids to Japan to get the Japanese education, maybe just because of uh, uh, discrimination, that's what they say anyway. But um, hindsight is, I think, uh, parents uh, they have to make a money, so most of the cases uh, they had a three, four kids. In some cases, ten. So uh, if they uh, send the kids to Japan, uh, they can make uh, more money uh, over here. Uh, you know, because uh, for the kids uh, uh, over Japan with uh, uh, grandparents or some of the uh, relatives. Well, that's the way it's always happened. When I went to Japan and enrolled to uh, grade one, actually it was uh, 38 kids and half of them are Canadian born. But uh, nobody spoke English except Mama and the Papa. That's all we knew. Home base is the Mio village in Wakayama Prefecture. Like I said, half of, half of us was Canadian born. Uh, it was nothing special. Uh, but 19, mm, was it 50, no, 40s, 44 was end of the year, end of the war? 45. 45, then next year, 46. Uh, those uh, Nisei uh, came to uh, uh, to uh, village, and they are enrolled to the uh, uh, the classes, but uh, they had a hard time because um, the customs and the language. So we never had a good chance to get used to. We always had a fight because they couldn't understand the Japanese. We couldn't understand the English. But I, I made a one friend uh, who, was, uh, who passed away already, but one, one, one of my best friends. Actually, my father uh, had an uh, accident in a river stock, in a snow slide in 1938. And that time, um, uh, Let's see now, how many people were killed? Anyway, one, two survivors, and my father was one of the survivors. So he was lucky, but once uh, they had uh, a newspaper said uh, he was dead. But luckily, he had a broken legs, but he survived. Um, that's why uh, we went back to Japan. One of the, another reason we went to Japan because uh, 
he had uh, uh, the broken legs and uh, uh, he thought maybe he could uh, do better in Japan. Well, somebody told him anyway. So that's why we went back to Japan in 1938. Whole family went, yes. Uh -huh. But uh, 1940, he actually, he was born in uh, Osaka. He's a, uh, he wasn't a country boy. So he couldn't hack the uh, countryside <laughs> life. You know, uh, number one, the language is uh, different because he was talking in Osaka uh, language, and we were talk everybody else was talking the Mio, you know, the rough uh, Mio uh, language. So uh, he couldn't hack it. He tried a lot of things, but that's why he wanted to came back, come back to Canada again. So he came back again here by himself in 1940. Just before the war started, so that was must be uh, 41. Then war started right away, so we've been separated during the war time. So uh, yes, only family? grandpa was already passed away, so uh, grandma was there. So four of us, I was only male, mm -hmm. grandma was already near 80. And my sister, uh, three years younger than me, and a mom, mm -hmm. during the war time, uh, four of us lived together. Mm -hmm. uh, during the war time, uh, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, even uh, most of the family, their man's already gone to war or to help to uh, uh, manufacture those uh, other stuff. So in the village, mostly all the people and women and the kids. So uh, and one time towards the end of the war, we were bombed. And um, you know, just like uh, Ukrainian news today, uh, just innocent people are being killed. And in our small village that night, um, one, two, three, I guess it was six people killed. And 21 houses are burned down. And the uh, house just in front of us was burning like hell. And, uh, you know, no, uh, uh, firemen around, so I was uh, just uh, putting the water around, and luckily uh, we survived. I mean, the house wasn't burned down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through this, so right now when I see this uh, Ukrainian uh, wars, that reminds me that night. Mm -hmm. Well, not that just night, because uh, those days, Every night, 11 o'clock comes, then uh, uh, you know what, the Boeing 29, well, that's old days, but the oh, bomb us. Uh, one time, uh, we counted 200 of them, and just about every night they come through. So at the beginning, we were so scared, and we went to the, well, everybody had uh, shelter, but us, uh, with uh, women and the kid, we couldn't f make any shelter. So we went to the ditch and uh, we stayed there for overnight, not overnight, but during those uh, uh, times. And especially my grandma, uh, later on she said, oh, I'm not going there anymore. I'm going to die in the house, so, you know, type of things. But I can understand those uh, Ukrainian people are going through right now. Mm. But still, we're the lucky ones. Uh, you know, the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Yeah. Uh, some of the Nisei uh, being experienced that uh, tragedy. So uh, we're in the countryside. Uh, so more or less, 
we just watched what's going on. My village, um, and I guess in 1949, uh, first, those Kikanise uh, who's got uh, parents in Canada, they are the first one to come. Um, uh, in my class, I think three uh, groups came over to the mostly Stevenson. Uh, but the rest of us, we didn't have any money, we didn't have any connection to come, bo come back here. Then uh, uh, I had a chance to come over here as uh, uh, a refugee, the uh, Canadian uh, uh, um, th those days, I think the uh, occupan occupancy army was based in Japan, and he wanted to take somebody back to Canada. And I was nominated, and I went to see uh, his name was uh, Brigadier uh, Benache. He was a commander uh, in Japan. But that didn't materialize because he had to come back here quickly. And so that's out. Uh, that's more or less uh, made me uh, more uh, desire to come back to Canada. Then, uh, I guess a couple of years later, my cousin came back here. Then he asked me, you want to come, come to Canada? I said, yes, I want to go over there. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came here in 1955. Yeah, those days, um, mm -hmm. uh, one thing, I was lucky enough. I had a uh, birth certificate. So that's the only thing we needed. Oh. Yeah, that shows. Uh, I was a uh, uh, Canadian citizen by birth. Uh, that's why we just went to the uh, Canadian embassy in Tokyo and applied for the Canadian passport. And we got the Canadian passport, so we, I came here as a Canadian. Maybe two, three months, mm -hmm. yeah, for just passport. Mm -hmm. but. Um, I never been to the, the Tokyo the first time. <laughs> so that was kind of an adventure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. From Osaka to, oh, yeah. yeah. Then another four hours from Osaka to Mio. So that's the long hours. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the thing was uh, not by distance or not by the, the hours, because uh, everybody, everybody else was uh, taking the same route, you know, next door or cousins. So uh, it was kind of, uh, it kind of sounds funny, but if it's uh, something to do with Can to Canada, was I feel much closer. Well, everybody in the village felt so closer because the first time I went to Osaka, it was a strange place, so uh, it was much easier to come to Canada. Because over here we had friends and relatives. So it sounds kind of funny. I mean, see, uh, like I said, my uh, dad's uh, family was in Osaka. They don't understand these things. So uh, why you go over there, you know, uh, the country, you don't know, uh, you don't know the, the customers, you don't know the language. So uh, they always had questions, mm -hmm. even my... And what did you say? <laughs> Why did you want to go there, <laughs> to Canada? Well, well I, didn't, uh, I didn't answer anything because uh, already I decided to come, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I didn't know I argue with, him, um, especially my uncle, mm -hmm. he was... Uh, uh, the rich and more forceful, so I didn't want to uh, uh, argue with him. I just came.
another reason is, see, my father left in Japan, in to Osaka, when he was only 16. Then he didn't you know, write anything or nothing, just go, ca came to Canada and went back to uh, Japan so many years later. That's why um, my dad's brother, which is my uncle, they couldn't believe him. You know, well, they thought he was dead somewhere. Uh, that kind of uh, relationship between them, that's why they are so against me coming to Canada. Okay, number one, uh, I was lucky enough to uh, employed by uh, Panasonic company, now called the Panasonic, but in those days uh, they called it Matsushita Electric. Mm -hmm. But that was the one of the best company in Japan, and uh, wages are highest among the uh, those, you know. Um, so I had a good job, but only one thing was uh, uh, the first year was fine. But the second year, I found that the university, I just had a high school education. And the university education, uh, I mean, you know, a year later, somebody comes in with a high, uh, university education, he just jumps over me. So I said, I wanted to have a higher education in a nice school, but I couldn't make it because you have to do the, the work in the daytime and the nighttime. So I more or less uh, concentrating learning English so I can come up with some someday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the reason uh, I came over here. Because I could see, well, uh, Matsushita was one of the best company you work for even now you, you, have a, you haven't got a, a university education. But uh, I could see the ones younger than me or uh, came into the, the company later on, still he jumps on me and go up the, the higher classes. Okay, uh, when I came over here, that um, uh, relatives uh, lives in Stevenson, they made the arrangement me to go to the sawmill already. But my cousin, he said, uh, Right away he said, no, Haruji is going to walk here and uh, study here. So uh, my relatives, relatives in uh, Stevenson was so upset and they made already, uh, already arrangement. But the reason he said was, okay, you stay here and uh, learn English, learn the customs. That's what you're going to do. That's what he said. And he, he sponsored me. so. Uh, I followed his advice, and I went to uh, uh, Jewish family as a schoolboy. Well, not school, but houseboy. So I was doing just like a housemaid, uh, you know, dishing washes and looking after the kids, cleaning the house, and sometimes cut the lawn and the stuff. So. Uh, I took the different way to the ones uh, came over here. As soon as they came over here, they start to make money in the sawmills, canneries, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was only making thirty-eight dollars a month in uh, 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 in a you know house like a, like like a, just like a housemaid. Yeah. How old were you? Mm -hmm. Twenty-two already. And a special note is uh, the family I went there was uh, Jewish people. And they are so nice to us. Uh, I didn't know, of course. I thought uh, all Hakutins are all the same, you know. But they are so nice to me, especially for uh, uh, I prepare for discrimination. But uh, those. Uh, uh, Jewish people, they treat me like uh, uh, family members. Mm -hmm. nice. I, I, yeah, 
Only I was there for eight months. But all my life, uh, they helped me out. For, yes, for instance, uh, uh, when I applied for uh, the schooling, I took the uh, auto mechanic course at the Bank of Vocational. Uh, even that time, uh, he took me there. And uh, the first thing he asked, any discrimination here <laughs> type of things. Then uh, when I finished the school and I worked for uh, a dealership, but I was fired, then I wanted to start my own business. And he helped me out to uh, establish the business, uh, which is a service station business. And I started at uh, uh, Dunbar Street, which is, uh, you know, that West End. The surrounding area is all uh, English people, and Scottish, and so much of the discrimination every day. But uh, this family helped me out. Two times they put the money out, and that's the reason I could be here today. But I realized uh, you could do by hand a uh, limit to so much. Because even you work for eight hours, uh, those days I was working for me 12, 14 hours as a mechanic and operator of a service station. But I figured out so much I can do by myself. So uh, I wanted to get into the trading. So after the 11 years, I went into the trading company, uh, trading business. Um, first, uh, those days, you know, a lot, a lot of Japanese uh, products coming from Japan to this market here. But those days, everything was kind of cheap, but, you know, it's not good grade. But so I turned around. We wanted to uh, export something to Japan. So uh, I tried so many things, uh, export whiskey to Japan, <laughs> and uh, that failed because, uh, well, anyway, uh, whiskey. And next one was uh, uh, the pork because I was watching. Then uh, I was watching down the States the Japanese uh, product, uh, Japanese uh, uh, car was coming to the United States. So I was in a service station business too. So I figured maybe in near future, a Japanese car will be in uh, Canada too. So I applied for uh, the dealership for uh, Nissan. Those days they call it Datsun. Then I got a, the, the, everything was okay. Uh, I got a license for a uh, dealership, but I couldn't operate that the business at uh, the location I was doing the business because it's number street, a strict area. Um, I had to go move out to the King's or something, but I didn't have enough money, so I had to give up. So um, that's the end of uh, my ventures for these things. Then I turn around uh, to make something uh, Japan may need. That's why a friend, uh, with my friend, uh, who was uh, Nisei, and we started our own company uh, to export the lumber. But uh, the difficulty was the uh, old trading company, uh, they have a, the, the big backup of the, the money. We can't compete with them. So I said, OK. In that case, something they don't touch or something new area. That's why I looked at on. Then those days, uh, you know, the Canadian cedar? Red seed. That was uh, uh, 
uh, not in Japan anyway. So I made a study, and uh, we found one company in Japan. They are interested in it. So we started in, uh, exporting uh, the specialty Canadian cedar, and that turned into little housing, and was for a little while was quite successful. But again, we we're so small. So then I next uh, venture I took was uh, in Japan. Uh, they need those clear wood, which means no nuts, no defect, but was limited. Again, we can't compete with a big company. So uh, I said, okay, let's cut off the good part of the, the lumber and join together and make it longer, clear wood. Then one of the companies in Japan, they are interested in my, our project. And they, they offer me to make a joint, joint venture. So they put $2 million in. Then we put the plant in Surrey. And that's how we started uh, uh, remanu they call it remanufacturing. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for five years as a, a Canadian operator. And I retired at uh, age 63. The reason I, before I got involved with uh, uh, Kenjin Kai, uh, I was involved with uh, uh, Buddhist Church. Then, uh, oh no, the f first one was a Japanese school because my, I, I got married and uh, the, my oldest one grew up and she was going to start grade one. And those days we wanted to ha have them a uh, Japanese education too. So the Banco Japanese School is the only school that we had. Mm -hmm. So she was enrolled in there. Then once she was enrolled there, then uh, all parents uh, had a, a volunteers. That's why how we got involved. Ijikai, and uh, my wife uh, Bronx to uh, Boshikai. Uh -huh. I served uh, three terms as a president. Um, before the, uh, while she was still attending school, I was uh, elected the director. Then uh, that time I was on just on the uh, director, but after that, uh, uh, elected as a uh, meeting chairman, then <laughs> president, uh, three terms. Uh, th actually, the initial, initially, there was uh, uh, fundraising. Um, so operationally, operational was up to the uh, principal, uh, who was a, uh, Mr. Sato. Then uh, we're trying to uh, support him with uh, financially. Um, but those days we had a hard time. But, uh, at the, towards the end of the term, we we're always uh, no money there. Of course, uh, school was uh, much smaller. Uh, Ishikai means, uh, you know, in. Uh, uh, the language was EG means keep it up, uh, maintain. Uh, I was 55, but I wasn't involved till 1960 because my daughter, yeah. Yes, those days uh, was, uh, like I said, I was pretty rough, pretty tough uh, financially. And one uh, incident was, uh, uh, you know, there's uh, another school in here, uh, uh, Gladstone. Yeah. Um, she broke out from uh, Japanese school. 
and I established another school. So up to then, it was one school. So, you know, we didn't have to do any promotion or anything, just everybody went there. But since then, it's separate. For two, uh, we lost half of them are students at that time. So that affect the uh, finance. Yes, and uh, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but Mr. Sato was involved too, so uh, we're so sad. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So he encouraged the uh, That's my, you know, it's not our official, but uh, uh, at that time, uh, Mr. Sato uh, retired from Japanese school. So, maybe coincidence, but. Older. The thing is, uh, uh, this uh, enrollment uh, is all up to Canadian government policy. Because uh, at the early date, before uh, Kika Nisei's uh, kids started going to Japan, uh, go to school, there's only the uh, Nisei, you know, who was born here and grew up here when it started in 1952. Those times, wasn't any Kikanisei's kids. Then, uh, uh, 70s, I started to have this Kikanisei's kids. Then one time was 98% uh, of the, the students are Kikanisei's kids. The time of our uh, kids are going. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, the uh, Canadian government made a kind of policy to have new England. That was 1967 or something. Then their kids grown up here. Uh, then uh, their kids, most of the students was their kids. Then after that, uh, uh, I don't know if this is a proper English or not, but uh, in Japanese they call uh, wahori, well, means working holidays. That's a system. So whoever comes from Japan, uh, they have a, a permission to work and same time go around the country to have a ho half a holiday type of thing. So they call it, in Japanese they call it wahori, and a lot of people came over here, mm -hmm. and they 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 found kind of a, uh, partnerships in here. Then their kids started to come. So, to me, it all depends on the Canadian government policy changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what's going to be next. But okay. <laughs> the pure pure Nisei to Kinsei. And the new immigrants yeah. and the Wahori. Yeah. <laughs> Our um, main principle of uh, opening Japanese school was, well, you know, so many things, but the first time, um, well, Kikanisei time, because we couldn't speak English, and uh, we wanted to have a better communication with uh, our own kids, but they they more or less, uh, majority of times, they are speaking English. And the parents, Ikikani say, speak in Japanese. So we had a kind of a uh, mixed up all the time. That's why we wanted to uh, educate Japanese language for our own sake, to make better communication. Uh, for my case, um, I was trying to teach and speak in Japanese to my own kids, but uh, somehow I was I failed because I could uh, understand a little bit of English. That's why uh, my daughter says something. I replied in English most of the time. That's why they're poor in the Japanese. But uh, some of the families, uh, 
what can he say? They don't understand much English. They don't speak in English. Those kids, they are so good at speaking in Japanese because they wanted to make communication. So the only thing they can make is just through uh, make the communication in Japanese. But so even today, the ones they can speak good English, uh, good Japanese, their family is Japanese-oriented uh, family. But uh, to me, this is my observation, so I may be wrong. But Kikani say uh, to me, um, they are not that. Uh, well, one thing Kikani say they didn't have a higher education. The highest may be the high school. Uh, not many had uh, university education. So the uh, only thing we wanted was just a communication. We didn't, we didn't expect anything more than that. So uh, that's the point. <laughs> the first time I was to get involved with the Kenji guy, well, I was doing uh, more work at the Bukyokai, uh, Buddhist church. Then somebody uh, noticed I was uh, doing something anyway. So they wanted to have somebody to look after their organization. So they approached me, uh, can you help us? That was a simple thing. Then once I got involved, then I realized uh, that uh, interest uh, is uh, always going back to the old country and the place they grow up. So uh, I said, OK, let's make this uh, a little stronger. Uh, but you know, uh, the policy was uh, uh, we can welcome anybody. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, Wakayama people, but as long as they, they enjoy our uh, policy and the groups, welcome. That's why mainly for social gathering, nothing else. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, uh, I wasn't, uh, uh, before I got involved, it uh, seems to me there was a one incident, uh, some of uh, uh, what kind of people got involved uh, was something, so uh, the, uh, they wanted to help him out. That's how they started. Of course, um, when I looked into the history of Okayama Kenjinkai, uh, even before, there was a, a group in uh, Vancouver here. Uh, then, same time, they had uh, uh, Sonjinkai, which is a village group, a big great uh, village group in Stevenson, Mio Sonjinkai, they were pretty active. But I thought uh, when I got uh, uh, elected as a president, that we don't want to be uh, just a, the Mio, we want to look after the whole prefecture people. That's why we expanded. Uh, the first part, uh, the Kenji Kai member was all by people from uh, Vancouver. And uh, when looking around, the, the big uh, part of that Wakayama people was living in Stevenson, Richmond. They, those days they called it just Stevenson. So we expanded. Uh, just luck luckily enough, my fa father-in-law was staying in Stevenson. So I asked him to recruit the uh, Stevenson people to get into the Wakayama people, uh, Wakayama Kenshin Kai. Then we doubled the membership. That's how we started. Uh, and even uh, uh, New Year's party, before then, we just had a people in uh, Vancouver. But when I got elected, then uh, 
one year, we have one party in Vancouver next year. We have, you know, Stevenson type of things. Uh, that was 1988. Uh, that was a, the man came from uh, uh, Wakayama uh, called uh, Mr. Kuno. Uh, we are celebrated for 100th year. So that's why we built the Japanese garden in oh. Stevenson. It was you guys who did that. Yeah. Then we donated it to uh, Richmond. Uh -huh. And that year, that year, as a big celebration, he made a meal too. Uh -huh. So uh, we made that kind of group uh, visiting there. 158 people, mm -hmm. uh, including the pe uh, some people from uh, uh, East uh, Toronto area. Mm -hmm. Then we celebrated in Mio. And that's uh, something uh, memorable. Yeah. Uh, I was quite surprised so many people joined us. I was present, so um, not all my ideas, but uh, one is uh, a Japanese garden. Yeah. Number two was going to Japan to celebrate with the uh, uh, people of uh, Mio. Mm -hmm. Then number three, we have a uh, 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 mm, what do you call it in, Jap in, in English? Um, mm, in the bukkyo term, uh, we celebrate uh, their life. So uh, we gather around in uh, Stevenson Buddhist Church. Uh, I was lucky enough, you know, um, uh, mainly, well, all executives get together, you know, we put the ideas together. Um, uh, Japanese garden was my idea, but um, going to Japan was uh, uh, a village of a uh, Mio idea, and uh, having uh, those ceremony was uh, some of the executive ideas. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing I was so disappointed because uh, over here, uh, Mr. Kuno's uh, grandson or great grandson, we went to school together, high school together. Yeah. Two of them were here. But the Kuno family, well, seems to be, I don't know, this is a trend in Miyomura or still I don't, uh, I'm questioning. But the, the original uh, Mr. Kuno passed away, but in Japan in alone. Nobody looked after him. So even in Mio? Even in Mio. <gasps> uh, that time was a big celebration. Of course, um, they actually uh, made the programs, you know, ceremonies and a gathering and uh, uh, issue the books, everything else. We just uh, went there, that's all. That no, that uh, went along for three days, I guess. The first day was just a ceremony. The second day was a party. Uh, two days. Well, the last time was uh, uh, 19, oops, sorry, 2015. Uh, we celebrated uh, Kenjin Kai uh, uh, 50th year. Mm -hmm. And again, <laughs> just happened to be I was a president, okay. so we had a big ceremony, uh -huh. and the, the governor of Wakayama came from Japan, mm -hmm. and we celebrated, and we uh, made that, uh, we each, um, published the, the books for f the last 50 years. This mm -hmm. uh, is in here. Oops. And I thought the uh, only thing I could do uh, for Mio is uh, write it down and leave it there. So that this much I I've done. 
mostly in Japanese. Some of them are translated in English. So that is a list of what you have written. Papers? Yeah. Can you list a few or read a few? Uh, so many things, but uh, some of them are yeah. just uh, uh, focused on the Houston okay. area. Uh -huh. But uh, for the Kikanisei, uh, today's topics, I have uh, this, you know, the book I published mm -hmm. called uh, Canada Imin no Ko, uh, Son of a Japanese Immigrant. Mm -hmm. Then another one, uh, that was uh, published in 2007. And uh, uh, just this is the writing, but Kikanisei, uh, uh, 1986, which is included in here. Then uh, uh, next one is uh, 19, no, 2009. Uh, Kikanisei and the Second World War. And next one is, uh, um, I don't know what you say this English, but Disappearing Kikanisei. Uh, those are directly uh, related to Kikanisei. But I made other things, uh, how the Japanese people settle in uh, Stevenson. Uh, that was my biggest project that took me three, four years. And that's again uh, the booklet. Plus, um, I guess uh, the people in the, this uh, museum here and the uh, museum in uh, Stevenson uh, paid attention on this and displayed in the uh, Stevenson uh, Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, more or less, uh, uh, first I started with uh, uh, the people immigrate from Mio to Stevenson. That's where I started it. And uh, with the help of uh, 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 Stevenson people, um, I figured out where they lived alongside the river. Uh, that was uh, the first project that took me uh, uh, four years to cover uh, 1,800 uh, families. And then I turned around, then those people came from Mio, but where did they live? Where did they come from? So I put that. Uh, attention to uh, the Mio village itself. Uh, luckily, I grew up there, so I had uh, some memories, you know, that uh, each house who lived there type of things. So uh, those two was the first project. Huge. Uh, it took me four years. <laughs> I was, this is uh, still, uh, in the process, I didn't uh, publish it yet, but um, later on, uh, we have, they call it a homestay. Mm -hmm. You know, people come from Japan and uh, stay the Canadian family. Yeah. And we had uh, uh, our niece, my wife's niece came over here. So I, ma I made a story about her you know, through, uh, I guess it was the five years she was here, type of things. Then the last one I made was uh, my mother's uh, life history. Oh. Uh, she had a kind of a, a interesting uh, life. So I wrote this down, but it's not published. Uh, well, the difference now and those days, you know, the, uh, the women had a rough time. And uh, my mother's case, she was uh, married in Japan with an arranged marriage to the cousin. Then uh, they came over here as an immigrant, but the husband got sick, 
TB. So they went back to Japan, and he passed away. And she came back to Canada again. Then she uh, met uh, my father for the second marriage. And uh, this, I don't know, hate to say, but my father liked the gambling. So she had a hard time. But anyway, they back to, uh, went back to Japan. And during that time, like I said, uh, my father had a big accident and so on and so forth. So my mom had a, bit, a very rough time. And even during the war time, um, she had to look after kids and mother because her uh, husband was in Canada. So uh, she worked for a uh, lighthouse, was a uh, few miles away in the meal, but there's this lighthouse there. Uh, actually, she was working there, mainly just looking after uh, the family there. Uh, every day she brought the stuff to the family because right in the middle of the nowhere, you know, the lighthouse was. Then the lighthouse was bombed, and she wasn't there at that day, but, you know, but, but those days, uh, uh, we've been actually shot at it by the, the, the American airplane fighters. Uh, like I said once, it was bombed once. Then, I don't know, a few times, uh, those American fighters, those days it wasn't a jet, but it was pretty fast, and just shoot at us. And luckily, it didn't hit us, but so many days uh, we just uh, we experienced these things. So I hate the war. <laughs> so um, I don't want to compare anything with the, the people who intern in here, but uh, they didn't have this kind of, uh, uh, because uh, like I said, still we're lucky in the countryside. Mm -hmm. But the people in the big city, uh, you know, just about 20% uh, of the total population being perished, perished. That's including. Uh, that uh, soldiers went to war, but uh, up to the end of the end of the war, they counted twenty percent just disappeared. And uh, uh, I have a friend in uh, in Tokyo. Uh, actually, she's involved in these uh, 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 history of uh, Canadian immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been doing this for a long time, but they have another uh, museum in Yokohama. Mm -hmm. So I've been sending these items through her. Oh, good. And another thing is, uh, I thought I wanted to keep this in uh, Wakayama, so I donated it to uh, Wakayama City Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, Wakayama Provincial. Uh, they are not too keen about it, so. Uh, but a city is more keen to keep these uh, uh, records. So, Kikani um, say story is maybe different to the the uh, the ones. Uh, uh, but the one thing for sure is uh, we're different to the Nisei. You know, the ones grown, uh, born here and grown up here. That was. Uh, my my question since I arrived here, why it was so different? Uh, still, I haven't got an answer yet. But <laughs> uh, I'm trying to understand them, but somehow we are different. I think it's based on uh, the grown-ups and the education, because where you grown up in here, of course, uh, that's why 
when they came over to Japan, they had a hard time. And when we came to Canada, we had a hard time. And somehow, we don't understand each other, even today. Well, I don't. Maybe somebody else does, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <coughs> did you ever struggle or feel confused about whether you were Japanese or Canadian? N well, uh, I tried to be a Canadian. Trying to learn English, and, but still, after seven years, still I'm a Japanese. And um, I'm going to die as a Japanese, I think. But funny thing is, uh, everybody says, not everybody, but some of the people say to me, I'm well Canadianized. But myself, I don't understand what what is the Cana what's, what is a Canadian. Still, I'm I don't understand. I'm still I'm searching. What is a real Canadian? One time I thought it was uh, the history of uh, Indian people. Maybe that was the original in Canada. But they are not talking about. Uh, Indian people as a Canadian. So as, but when you look around, the, the Canada is multicultural. Well, that's a good thing. Got Chinese here, and English here, and French here. So we're part of it. That much I understand. But one thing is, uh, this is a funny story maybe, but uh, only lately I can hug someone. In Japanese customs, there wasn't such a thing, especially towards the ladies. You know, uh, maybe 20 years ago, I said, oh. but now somebody offers me a hug, I can accept, I can hug. That's a big change to me, I mean, for nobody else. But still, I think I'm a Japanese. But when I went to Japan with my uh, uh, brother-in-law, who is uh, Nisei, born here and raised here, my sister's, uh, sister's my, my wife's sister's husband, but Japanese noticed right away, you're different. That he was different. He was different, but not, you. not me. So the same person asked this question. I asked, what about me? Well, you're Japanese. That's what they said. Um, I guess, uh, oh. So I said, why? But he said, uh, uh, no, not he. The, that person said, the, uh, the looks different. To me, it's all the same. He's not mixed uh, race or anything. Yeah. Simple word is uh, lucky. Mm -hmm. Because if I wasn't born here, I didn't have a chance to come over here. I wanted, even I wanted to come over here. Maybe I did after the government changed the, uh, those uh, policies mm -hmm. uh, for the new immigrant. But uh, in uh, Mio village is kind of natural when you grow up, come to Canada. But the uh, main purpose was to make money, but it's being changed. Uh, from our generation on, it's to stay here, to live here, to die here. Uh, I never thought I was going back to Japan. Um, even my father-in-law and even my cousin, they wanted so badly to go back there before they die. But I didn't feel that way. Well, they, they went back there a few times, but they died here. That's why I made another uh, uh, writing. and. Um, 
in Japanese, when you die, or the death, um, a turn into the uh, turn into the the soil. That's the way they uh, describe your your death. So uh, I wrote that uh, as a title for the immigrant who died here. But main purpose, main uh, uh, desire for those generation, they wanted to go back there before dying. And so many of them, they can make it. That's why I wrote this. You know something? Uh, this is again, uh, Japan has a something to attach to you. The culture, uh, not always nice, but uh, to me, uh, I think it's going uh, boil down to is uh, kokoro. So even in Japan, uh, in Japanese, we're trying to uh, teach uh, the language, writing and the reading. But if we could the, uh, teach them uh, the Japanese kokoro, mm -hmm. the spirit, spirit. Mm -hmm. spirit or mind, I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the proper in, uh, word in English yet? Uh, maybe spirit. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's something you, I can't explain, but I know they have, and I might have a little bit of it. I'm trying to pass this on to the, my own daughters, but it's a very hard. Uh, looking at my own kids, they have something there. I'm so glad to appreciate the Japanese culture and Japanese mind. Not too much as I have, but maybe 2%, 5%. And myself, uh, I've been so lucky, I, like I said, uh, compared with uh, Japanese life we've gone through. Uh, even today, uh, they have a good, uh, um, maybe uh, their life is much better than the time I grew up, but still, I'm lucky enough to stay here and live here. So all that Kikani say, uh, they should be thankful. In my age, I'm 89 already. Next spring, I'm going to be 90. But looking back, uh, I don't want to be noticed. But um, I got a lot of enemies somehow. Uh, because uh, when you keep quiet, maybe nobody will notice you. But they're all friendly. But when you do something different, then sometimes it's noticeable and people may appreciate, but uh, hindsight, people are against you. I found out. I don't know why, but all, every time I find it. So I got a lot of enemies. I think it's my, my personality. And for instance, uh, uh, I feel I encounter so much of uh, discrimination. But uh, you ask so many Niseis, they said, oh, we never had such a bad things. But I was the one, uh, maybe, to walk or to against it. When I had business in uh, uh, English people area, every day was a struggle. But uh, I decided to fight with them. 
then later on, they accepted me. So that's my policy. Even today, uh, I know they don't like me, but I, I'm trying to fight with it till they understand me. If I think I, uh, if I think I was right, biggest uh, another regret, the biggest impact uh, gave us was uh, in Canada was the discrimination. Like uh, I wrote it on this book too, but the uh, you know every day is uh, somebody's called you a Jap or a Jinx or uh, you know just because by the looks I, I don't mind I can explain to them. Um, but the time I was looking for the house to stay the first to stay um, even the house was empty, ready to be rented. People say, sorry, it's been rented already. And I found out that later on, you know, it was still for the rent. And next thing, I was trying to look for the house. Uh, by the time we bought the house, nobody said the boo, but I found out that uh, the neighbors all got the petition to kick us out just because we were Japanese, just, just because we were Asian. What year was that? Uh, 1960s. Because this I tell them, nobody believes me. But I found out through the, the previous owner, the one, he was a Jewish, but they sold the house to me. And he told us a year later, we had uh, this kind of incident. I was so surprised, but that wasn't something, uh, uh, well, I knew that's something that was expected. I did. And even next door was uh, English people. Uh, they didn't like us anyway. And one night, uh, I think it was uh, late in the fall, uh, heavy rain, and uh, uh, next door uh, getting uh, flooded. So I put my rain gear on, uh, picked up sho shovel, and offered the help. And he said, we don't need your help. So that time I realized, oh, okay. Then even we need help, we can't ask for any help. I think, uh, you know, all uh, Japanese had uh, this kind of experience, one or two, but that's uh, struck, those incidents uh, stuck to me. That's more sad than uh, uh, escaping from uh, uh, the bombing night. Mr. Sato had a one, mm -hmm. and the other directors, they had a copies. Right. So it must be there somewhere. Uh -huh. do, you want, do you want to still find them? I might be able yeah, to find still them. find them. I like to find them. Yeah, okay. I, uh, that's the, uh, that's yeah. the proof. So the Landscapes of Injustice, mm -hmm. the University of Victoria, mm -hmm. have digitized all of those custodians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can find them for you. Uh, you know, there's the newest minister, land racery there? Uh -huh. uh, maybe there, because uh, uh, other things I found out through there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Harry. Uh, thank you. Very, very Oops. Interesting. Really interesting. Uh, and I'm so glad you're recording everything. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'd like to thank you, your effort. Because uh, I've been trying to keep these records, uh -huh. but uh, more or less nobody is, well, we are minority, you know, just uh -huh. only few left now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, We're always too late, really. And uh, I even wrote it down, these things, but, you know, mostly in Japanese. Yeah. So uh, uh -huh. I'm very glad, yeah. uh, I'm thankful uh -huh. for your effort okay. or project yeah. to 
I don't know, uh, maybe it's not important in my words, but uh, after this project is finished, you know, you have a kind of conclusion there. Collective, collective.